Okay, so we're going to talk about your responsibilities as a first aider. Now, this might be before a first aid incident happens, so around prevention, during a first aid incident and after a first aid incident as well. As a first aider, you need to be able to take charge. You need to be able to keep calm, assess the situation and act as calmly as possible. Have a look around and see if you've got any bystanders that can help you. So they could assist you with calling the ambulance or any other emergency services. They could get you a first aid kit, they could get you an AED and just be there for some moral support. When you arrive at the scene, you need to be thinking about your environment and any dangers that are around. Of course, you are important, you're the most important person. Uh, so if there's any danger to yourself at all, then that might mean that you actually can't help the situation other than perhaps calling emergency services. There's no use you getting injured because then they're going to have two casualties to deal with. Okay, so consider if they're, if they're in water, if there's any traffic around, is there any crowd management that you need to deal with that's going to hinder your approach to this casualty? Also, if there's any objects around the casualty, maybe they've spilt um, or dropped a glass bottle, uh, maybe there's just general objects in the way that's going to prevent you from actually kneeling down around the casualty and giving them some support. So you've assessed the area and you've determined that it is safe for you to approach and, and help the casualty. You want to try and get as much information as possible about what's happened and the extent of anybody's injuries. When you approach a casualty, you need to make sure that they will consent to you helping them. So if it is a conscious casualty, you need to explain who you are and that you are a trained first aider and what you would like to do to enable to help them once you've assessed their injuries, if they allow you to do so. If you're dealing with a vulnerable casualty, such as a child, then you would need to try and get the parent or legal guardian's permission to treat that child. If they're not there, then we would assume implied consent. So we would carry out first aid, um, ideally with somebody there with us, so we're not alone with the child or vulnerable person, as long as they are happy for us to do so and it's not going to distress them further. If you have an unconscious casualty, we would presume that consent has been given and treat accordingly in order to potentially save their lives. When dealing with casualties, communication is really important. We need to make sure that we are calm and confident in what we're doing. We need to make sure that we don't use terms that they're not going to understand, as they may be overly confused because of the condition or injury that they have. We need to be conscious about body language when we're dealing with casualties uh, to make sure that we do look confident um, and also don't look like we're looming over somebody, especially for a, for a child. So we need to be conscious about that. We also need to be honest about their condition, but also finding that right line so that we don't distress them further if they've got any serious injuries. Another responsibility as a first aider is contacting emergency services. So the kind of information they're going to need to know is your location. So do make sure that you know your full address at your workplace and that if they are using a sat-nav to reach you, that that does actually get them to your address. And if it doesn't, that you know some landmarks in order to direct them so that they can reach you without any delay. They will also need to know how many casualties you have and what type of incident it is and the extent of their injuries as well. They will also ask you to repeat the location. So we spoke about prioritising first aid treatment a couple of times now, so we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. So if you've got a casualty that isn't breathing, that is going to come right at the top of our list. If we have someone that has a severe bleed, that will come next. And if we have anyone that has a bone injury, so perhaps a broken bone or a, a burn, then that would come next and then any other medical conditions. So to prioritise, it's breathing over bleeding, over bones and burns, then any other medical conditions or injuries. During the treatment of first aid, you must make sure that you are conscious of cross-contamination and uh, infection control. So when you're treating somebody, make sure that you wash your hands and you put on your gloves. Make sure that you don't touch the wound or cough or sneeze over the wound. And once you have used any dressings and anything to clean the wound up with, then make sure that goes in a biohazard bag into a biohazardous bin. You may have some cleaning kits that you can use and they're great um, to clean up body fluids um, and they provide you with a little biohazard bag, um, which is usually yellow or orange, and then you can pop that in the correct bin as well.